when we heard the news that she had come down with the, the step person's condition, my wife and I were just devastated. Uh, she had gone through so much, it just didn't seem fair. I'm, I'm still praying for a miracle. This is Scandal. She's about 15 years old, and she uh, still thinks she's all puppy. During the 80s, it became apparent that Las Vegas had become stale, that there hadn't been any big buildings, any big casinos built in some time. When I got here, uh, the Mirage had just opened, Venetian had just opened, Mandalay Bay had just opened. It, it was a, a golden period. Las Vegas was back and really strong. Everything I dreamed that Las Vegas would be exceeded. It was the most unbelievable time in Las Vegas history. It was multi-million dollar nightclubs, a lot of new Casinos were built. They were paying extravagant amounts of money to uh, have celebrities come and host an evening at a, at a nightclub. It was a uh, uh, happy hunting grounds for me. I got a lot of fun stories. The first inkling that I had that Celine was in Las Vegas was getting ready to do a big show here was a uh, an assistant manager at I think it was Whole Foods called me one day and said you're not going to believe who was in last night at about 11 o'clock pushing her shopping cart around and loading up on groceries it was Celine Dion and I ran that story and it and it went viral. I think the average housewife really um, appreciated her. She could have an army of shoppers and that sort of thing. And she goes out like any other housewife and, and does, does the shopping. That made a big impression on this city. Celine Dion, uh you know, creating a residency in Las Vegas in 2003 was a real game changer. In the past, or it had been trending that a lot of headliners, it was kind of towards the end of their career or one of the things that they do to cap off their career. And that was great. But Celine was in the prime of her career. She was an international mega superstar that could attract audiences from practically every part of the planet. And that was unique. She and Renee came up with an incredible business plan. It was a big deal when she held her press conference. I remember meeting uh, reporters from England, from Europe. It was the biggest happening that, that Las Vegas had seen in, in a long, long time. It was just a incredible place to be. Celine brought in an international crowd that Las Vegas hadn't seen since the days of Elvis. It was a golden time in Las Vegas, and Celine Dion was the top of the top of the top. Since 2003, Las Vegas was really starting a new modern day evolution. We went from gaming being the top revenue generator along the strip to diversifying. In addition to Celine announcing her show, it was the construction of the Coliseum Theater that was huge in, in the uh, community. I mean, it's a huge theater, it's state of the art, 
her show was quite uh, athletic. Um, the stage was ramped up. I was on that stage once. I could see how athletic she had to be to be able to sing and run and dance throughout that show. So I think that in addition to the asset of the theater, it also raised the bar on the expectation of what a headliner act could be. Well, when they started building the Coliseum, I can tell you that every stagehand in town, including myself, wanted to work over there because it was the biggest, newest thing. They had some amazing technology. That video wall they had was uh, state of the art. IOTC 720 represents all the backstage entertainment workers in the industry, be it film, theater, concerts. Every artist will, will travel with their key individuals, their head lighting guy, their head sound mixer. And then we supply all of the ancillary positions. I would say the, the amount of stagehands that are working on any given day, we can have a thousand stagehands. Early 2000s, if you were driving down the strip, you'd see names like Tom Jones, Frank Sinatra, Shecky Green, uh, your old time Vegas shows. And when Celine showed up, uh, she's the first pop star I remember, a, a pop star from my generation. Uh, doing a residency at Caesars Palace and it really it was a big deal because it was a younger crowd It wasn't the same people that would come all the time to see the same shows The direct economic impact of Celine I mean just on the shows nearly 700 million dollars in gross revenue she brought in I think it was 2.5 million ticket sales and over the course of 1200 shows that's direct. That doesn't calculate into the people that got on a plane, especially to come and have that special moment watching a Celine Dion show. It was the people who eat in restaurants, shopping, all the other ancillary things that they were doing, but what was driving them to Las Vegas was Celine Dion. She provided the rocket fuel for this city at a really important time when our economy had really crashed and beyond her direct economic impact, uh, a lot of female artists that have done residencies since then owe a huge debt of gratitude to, to Celine and Renee. Um, artists like Katy Perry, Britney Spears, Jennifer Lopez, Adele, all of them that you've seen come after Celine also have looked at Las Vegas residencies as a way for them to have work-life balance. I don't know if anyone is going to match her legacy for a long, long time. The 1,100 shows, she, she really left her imprint on this city. Used to be that I believed in love. It's been a long time since I've had that feeling. I can love someone. I could trust someone. <laughs> I remember the day that I heard that she was sick. And I know that her life has changed completely. And I know that she's got the best care in the world. But there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about her. I've sent her many a message praying for her. And I hope that one day she can get back on stage where she belongs. You know, I was performing in nightclubs um, here all over Las Vegas. And people were always talking when I was singing. But when I started singing, my heart will go on. All of a sudden, people got quiet. And I didn't realize why at the moment. So in about 2005, after I had my baby, I started uh, just trying to sell myself as a Celine tribute artist. And I was so surprised at how fast it picked up. And I always say, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with how much people love Celine. Her music is not easy. Most all of her music has a two and a half to three octave range, and her notes go anywhere from four to eight measures, you know? So you've gotta have good breath. You have to be able to hit those high notes. And trust me, I do vocal exercises 30 minutes a day. It's a hard industry, but you never can stop learning. You have to constantly pay attention. Which side are you holding the mic with? How does she stand? How does she look? How does she speak? How does she do her hair? How does she dance? And I try to be as authentic as I can. And the rest is history. Welcome back to 
Clash of the Cover Bands. I got a phone call to audition for a show called Clash of the Cover Bands, which Jimmy Fallon produced. And it was a show that features all of the tribute artists um, from around the United States. So I went through a million auditions. I made it all the way to the show. I told everybody around me, there's no way I'm ever going to win. Not because I don't believe in my tribute, not that I don't believe that I've not put so much time and effort into it, but because I've never really won anything like that. Congratulations, you are tonight's winner of Class of the Cover Bands. Now, it's absolutely changed my life. I've had to hire a manager, and I've been asked to go all over the world since then. Um, unfortunately, um, and I've, I've never gained any kind of pleasure from this whatsoever, but life is life. And since she's stopped performing, I've been getting a lot of phone calls, and I wish that it was her. It's, it's my hope that I can continue to spread the love of her music while she's getting better. And I hope that she knows that I'm doing the best that I can do and that I love her very much. And I pray for you very much. Up next, looking for truth as rumors fly. Why would you invent things about her life? When W5 continues. I uh, probably saw 10 to 11 Celine shows. And the one that stands out the most was when she came back the first night after Renee had passed. And she sang all by myself. And you could hear a pin drop in that theater. It was the most dramatic thing I experienced uh, from an entertainer. So many tears fell that night that I swear that uh, it raised the water level of Lake Bellagio. I think there's no question that Celine made Las Vegas cool again. She had a tremendous impact. Las Vegas is a, is a much different town, a much better town as a result of, of the impact that she made on it. You know, Celine, we holds a special place in the hearts of Las Vegans because beyond her residencies and her shows, she was a member of our community and she embraced Las Vegas. She gave back to Las Vegas. She had a home in Las Vegas. She raised her children in Las Vegas. And uh, this wasn't just a place where she you know, did a show, but it was a place where she wanted to be a positive impact, and she was. People were really amazed at how much, how generous she and Renee were. Generous with their um, lives. Uh, Celine would uh, dedicate shows to different charities every month. She would do, do a special show. And I can't imagine, I mean, it brought in millions. It made, it kept people alive in this city. Her, her uh, generosity. And uh, I don't think Las Vegas will ever for, forget that. For those of us in Las Vegas, we all wish Celine recovery and good health and, and, and hope that she's able to overcome this devastating illness. And I'm quite certain if she does and wants to come back with her career, Las Vegas will welcome her back with open arms. We love Celine here. There's just no question that Celine's presence is missed here, but her spirit is still around. I mean, she really, she really made a difference here. I 
I hope that Celine can pull off one of the great miracles in overcoming this disease because Las Vegas would really love to have her back. J'aime écouter une excellente équipe de médecins qui me traite pour que j'aille mieux. Et ce sont mes enfants qui me donnent le courage et l'espoir de continuer. In terms of treatment, there are two symptomatic treatments that we frequently use, or rather two groups. The first group is called benzodiazepines. This group includes medications that are used for anxiety disorders and also acts as muscle relaxants. The other group is called baclofen. They are also muscle relaxants, so patients would often take one or the other, or sometimes both, to treat their symptoms. Another way to limit the long-term effects of the illness is to not only treat the symptoms, but also to suppress the immune system. We sometimes give treatments called intravenous immunoglobulin. These are antibodies from hundreds and thousands of people who have donated blood. When they donate blood, we take the red blood cells and the antibodies. We then inject them into patients with autoimmune diseases, like stiff person syndrome. These are long-term treatments. They get infusions every week or two, or even once a month, depending on the severity of the illness. They get these treatments for long periods of time to limit their symptoms. The other option is to suppress the autoimmune system. We give medicine intravenously to suppress the production of B cells and to no longer produce antibodies in order to control or even cure the illness. Celine's most recent project came out at the beginning of 2023. It's the movie Love Again. And we later found out that her scenes were filmed separately. She was almost never present with the rest of the main cast. I was really interested in the soundtrack because they used old songs like It's All Coming Back to Me Now and That's the Way It Is. But they also used new songs. As a journalist, I asked myself if they're older songs that had never been released before or were they able to record new songs? Or they could have used AI technology, like some people have suggested. Did they copy her voice to make the soundtrack to the film? Everyone is worried about Celine's illness. Celine Dion's fan club is called the Redheads. It's an international fan club with followers from all around the world. It has 20,000 active members and 250,000 followers on social media. Celine is like family. We know a lot about her without truly knowing her. People love her for more than just her music. They love her for who she is inside, for her pure heart, and for being a loving mother, daughter, and wife. She will be forever loved. The public loves her for the right reasons. It's very unusual to not hear any news from her. She's usually an open book. She's someone that has openly talked about her many struggles and achievements over the years. It's the first time that she hasn't shared any details about her life. We always followed her career very closely because we usually received a lot of news throughout the year. We were able to follow her every move and now it's quiet. The silence has greatly affected us. We're a community that communicates often. The fan club was created through social media as we exchange information. These past few months, the community has been quite silent. We're just waiting to hear news from her. The silence will encourage websites to write fake articles in hopes of having more readers. I see lots of articles saying, Celine Dion has shared exclusive details that she didn't want others to know. Come on. But some will believe them. Why would you invent things about her life when showing respect would be a better way to demonstrate your love? It infuriates me. It enrages me. 
s'entretient un peu. It adds to the gossip surrounding her life. There are a lot of rumors about her. So every little detail of her life gets blown out of proportion. We're very surprised by the number of articles published in the media in recent months by journalists, tabloid newspapers, and random people. We're a bit surprised by how much people are talking about her. None of the articles are true unless Céline or her team confirms them. It's almost impossible to know the whole truth. So we can't believe everything that is published in news articles. When we come back... People miss you, and people want to hear your music live. Holding out hope for a return to the stage. I'm so hopeful that this will have a happy ending. W5 continues. As we were editing the documentary, Celine made a few discreet public appearances in Las Vegas. This gives hope to her fans and the music industry that her silence for the past year will only be a minor setback. I think Celine wants to come back. I think she really misses singing on stage. She absolutely loves what she does. She spent her life pushing the limits of her capabilities. So I believe that if she can come back, she will. No one is happy about this situation. Everyone is disappointed by Celine's absence in their daily lives. Unlike Whitney Houston and George Michael, she is able to make a comeback. She is still alive and has a lot of willpower. She has incredible discipline that is unmatched by others. So I think that she will do anything to sing again. But who knows what will happen? We wholeheartedly wish for her to come back. It would be incredibly sad if her career ended like this. Realistically, no one is expecting a mind-blowing comeback with a world tour and hundreds of concerts. People's expectations aren't very high. We're just waiting for news about her health. That's the most important part. If she's able to continue on with her passion, we'll be there to support her. People miss you, and people want to hear your music live. So that is simply all that I'm doing. I'm just keeping you, keeping you going until you get back on that stage and you rock it out again. And I know you're going to come back out soon. I have hope. I'm proud to be her godmother. I love and admire her. She is deeply missed, and uh, I'm so hopeful that this will have a happy ending. There will be an immense void if Celine doesn't come back on stage. We hope that this story will have a happy ending. It's a fairy tale that began with a young 14-year-old girl who started singing and never stopped achieving great things. She made us believe that we could reach unattainable dreams, like singing at the Oscars, having two residencies in Las Vegas, and having multiple hit songs in English at the Billboard Music Awards. Just for these reasons, Celine has to come back. My only wish is for her to perform one last time because your career can't end this way. I really hope for our sake that Celine goes back on stage to end her career gracefully and with great success. Celine Dion's sister Claudette told the Quebec magazine Set Jour that in their dreams, Celine will return to the stage, but that the singer does not have control over her muscles, including her vocal cords. Shania Twain, back from her self-exile on the road to what some believe will be the biggest comeback in music history. In 2012, Shania told W5's Beverly Thompson how she was getting back in shape to hit the Vegas Strip alongside another Canadian legend. What does Shania Twain listen to? Well, I listen to Celine Dion. 
<laughs> I love, I, Celine's part of my, my workout, my vocal workout. She's just such an, an incredible voice that I, and I learn from her every time I, you know, I listen to her, so. She was really at the inception of the concept of the resident artist here in Vegas. While I was off mothering and, and cooking and, and taking my sabbatical, she was, you know, On she stage. was making all of this happen yeah. here in Vegas. So I'm proud of her, you know, alone, on her own, as an individual, of, of doing what she did here. You can watch that entire documentary, as well as all of our new investigations, on W5's official YouTube channel. I'm Avery Haynes. On behalf of everyone here at W5, thanks for watching. See you next time.